Hi. So I got a comment from a Mr. James Blackley who said, Hi, Christopher, love your videos. Do you have any recommendations for a wind turbine for somebody to make who does not own a 3D printer? Yes, I definitely do. I understand that not everybody is a 3D printing maximalist like me. It is my opinion that 3D printers are so useful that everybody should own one, regardless of what your interests or hobbies are. But that's fine, not everybody has to think that way. So let's talk briefly about what makes something a turbine. So imagine here, I have one of the blades for my windmill here. There's nothing special about it. It's completely flat and it's kind of cut out into a shape with my jigsaw. I own a jigsaw, I don't know if you guys knew that. Now, if I sit here and flap it like this, it makes wind, right? Which direction? Well, it's kind of going all over the place in that way. So imagine this for me. If I took this blade and I rotated it sort of at this angle and I moved it really quickly this way, what would happen? Well, it would kind of scoop out the air that's in front of it and move it upward, right? Well, the same thing would happen if the air came from upward and hit it. You know, it would move. Actually, I don't know if it would move left or right, but it would move one of those directions, right? And if it's locked onto a sort of hub, it would spin, right? Or at least it would, it would create just a little bit of angular momentum. You'll see a lot of places they measure propellers with pitch. My understanding of pitch, and somebody feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, because it seems like different people use it differently. Sometimes it's measured in inches and sometimes it's measured in degrees. Pitch, when it's measured in inches, is supposedly the distance that the propeller would travel after one rotation while in its desired medium. So for a, a, a propeller for something that's supposed to fly, you know, it, one spin would move it 24 inches if it's a 24 inch pitch, right? One spin of the propeller through air because there are also boat propellers, and those ones will have a pitch of like three inches, right? So one, or probably more than that, but, but, but one full rotation will move it in the water three inches. So it's measured based on the linear distance that it would move in one rotation in the intended medium. Okay, that's important to note. The point that I'm getting to with all of this is that propellers and turbines are the exact same thing, or at least they can be if you want them to. You know, they might, they might have small design differences between the two of them because they're optimized for different tasks, but in terms of the principle, they're the exact same. So this idea of reciprocity in wind turbines and you know electromechanical devices and stuff like that is very fascinating to me. I think it's just incredible that if you take a PC van and you apply a voltage to it, it spins, but if you spin it, it creates a voltage. I just think that concept is wonderful and fascinating. So that being said, here are a couple things that I've used as wind turbines that are not 3D printed and do not require any 3D printing. The first one being, I found these little propellers. I'm not sure what they were for. I think they were for larger drones or something. Maybe they were for model airplanes. I think these were, tw yeah, these are 12 inches long. And I just took two of them and I glued them together. This was, at the time that I made it, this was the best working turbine that I had. And I was really surprised by that because I, that was around the time that I was making the epiphany that windmills are all about surface area, which I still believe. But this one really impressed me with how much it was able to. I had a, I had a one to 40 or a 40 to one gear ratio with one of the same stepper motors that I'm using. And it was enough to generate, I think it generated, you know, between five and six volts, which I was, I was very surprised by. So this little, you know, these little drone or, or airplane propellers, bottled airplane propellers, they work great. On top of that, they're optimized for efficiency. So you could take, I mean, you could probably do, you know, three if you wanted to. I bet you you could get a little bit more surface area out of them. I also have, this was a little bit larger. I believe this was, uh, what is this one? 24 inches um, at a 12 inch pitch. This one worked pretty well. It was a little bit heavy. I think it was intended for slightly faster wind speeds, but perhaps with a more aggressive pitch, it would have worked very well. I gave up on this design too fairly quickly, but I bet you that if you found one with a pretty good pitch, and you optimized it, I, I bet it would spin like nobody's business. I bet I bet one of these would be really good, especially if you had two stacked, I bet it would work even better. So this was, this was made for a gas powered airplane. And that's why I made that whole point a second ago is anything that is intended to be used as a propeller can be used pretty darn well as a turbine as well for a lot of these projects. This one, this one was nice too specifically because it had a, a eight millimeter bore which is exactly what I use for my 516 nuts and bolts. Now onto my last little example, perhaps a little bit different from the others. This is the impeller fan that I took out of a tower fan. This one was cool because I got it for free on bulk trash pickup day in my neighborhood. I drove all around like a madman, specifically looking for tower fans because I look how big this thing is too. I've seen a lot of people talk about potentially putting something like this on the side of the road to hopefully collect some of the energy that cars create in the cross streams and the winds and stuff that they create as they drive by. I don't know if that would work because it kind of seems like you would just increase the static pressure of the air that the cars have to drive through. Um, but that's a job for the physicists, I guess. So anyway, getting back to the point with these little things, these are impellers and they're usually designed so that they kind of sit in a little housing and that there's one way for air to come in, one way for air to come out. So when you spin this thing really fast, what happens is it shoots air in all directions. 
And because there's only one direction for it to go, it moves that air outward at a pretty significant pressure. As I mentioned, reciprocity. If you put one of these outside, as the wind passes by it, it's going to cause the shaft to spin. And these things are fairly large. You can get them, like I said, for free pretty easily if you're just a little bit diligent with the trash pickup days. And on top of that, people are always throwing out those darn tower fans all the time anyway. You know, and not to mention out of that same fan, I got one of the largest motors that I own. I mean, you could put this fella on an e-bike or something, no problem. This thing's huge. It weighs like five pounds probably. So if you don't own a 3D printer and you're looking, well, first of all, if you don't own a 3D printer, I recommend buying a 3D printer because they're awesome. But if you don't own a 3D printer and you're looking for something to do uh, with wind turbines that you don't have to 3D print, those are some great starting points for you. Anyway, just some food for thought on this beautiful Wednesday. I hope you all are doing great and I hope you have a wonderful day.